You're Australian? Uh, yeah, I was born in Australia. I was born in Sydney. Whoa, what? good day, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Fisk was Australian. Who knew? Fisk was set in Melbourne specifically. Fisk is from Down Under. We had the same <laughs> idea, didn't we? Yeah. We definitely have Hello, everybody, here. and welcome <laughs> to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, a podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. Yay. And we're very geographically centric, I think, today, it seems. We're really into this Australian thing. Today, we're doing a review of Fisk on Netflix, I believe it is. Fisk on Netflix, the very first episode entitled, very creatively, Episode One. <laughs> Woo! It works. If, yes. Uh, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give us a five-star rating if you're listening in, and please leave us a nice review. We really appreciate it. And if you'd like us to review a show for this fun month of January or sci-fi month in February, in the comments below, type WTF, the show that you'd like us to review and where we can stream it. For example, today you would have said WTF Fisk on Netflix, and we would review it. Maybe. Maybe. Guess what, everybody? We've got an Emmy winning meteorologist. You can't spell meteorologist without meteorologist, Katie Nicolau. <laughs> very accurate. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Always wonderful to have you here, Katie. Thank you for being here. So much fun. Oh, anything for you guys. Aww. Oh, cool. Good to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Call um, it in anytime. I'm going to need some hot <laughs> cocoa delivered to me. Amazon, whatever, there doesn't matter. Hot cocoa, I'm almost out. Dr. Muhammad <laughs> Noor is an occasional Star Trek science advisor. He also has a really cool title at Duke University. Uh, what's up, Muhammad? Hey, always a pleasure to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. I'm here at my title office in Duke University. <laughs> Dude, I, if I, you were my professor in college, I walked in and saw that in your office, I'd be like, immediate yes every class you yeah. have like, we're, gonna, go. we're gonna be just fine we're gonna be friends <laughs> actually this semester oh, I'm yeah. teaching, this semester i'm teaching a class called genetics evolution star trek and it's a, it's a first year seminar <laughs> can you do a virtual class because i will pay tuition for that i that sounds fun <laughs> mm -hmm. uh my name is ryan t husk and uh i couldn't afford that tuition nor would duke university accept me so I just have to get oh, the cliff oh, notes oh. for it. But <laughs> today we are doing Fisk. So let's get up into that. This is going to be super exciting. I'll just bet Dr. Muhammad Noor, where do we go from here? Hmm, it's a predicament, meaning that we have to predict what each other thought of the show after having watched it without giving away whether we liked it or not. Ooh. Sounds tough. Uh, yeah, this is Muhammad and, favorite part of the show. It is my favorite. It's really exciting. I love this kind of stuff. Muhammad and I have known each other for a few years pretty well. Same thing with Katie. Katie and Muhammad know each other pretty well. I think we're going to get this pretty accurate. Let's see. Dr. Noor, I predict that you like this show. I predict that you liked it moderately. Maybe around okay. an eight. I think that's where you're floating around. He's checking his notes because he's like, oh, that's pretty close. <laughs> Katie, I, remember what I, wrote. <laughs> I think you also like this show, but slightly less than Muhammad. I think you're going to be like, it was fun. It was funny. But is it really up my alley? I'm not so sure. That's what I'm thinking for Katie Nicolau. What about you, Muhammad? What are your predictions? So, Ryan, for you, I think you liked it. I don't think you loved it, but I think you liked it. I think you're positive. I don't think maybe as high as an eight, but I think you're you're fairly, you know, I think you're still up there, you know, well above the five is, is my guess. Katie, I think maybe you liked it a little bit more than Ryan, but also maybe not quite at the eight level. So somewhere somewhere okay. in the, in the seven-ish range or seven point something range. I think, I think you were mm -hmm. like, not what I expected, but interesting. <laughs> Okay, well, see, this this gets interesting because I've been thinking about it for you guys. I'm like, I've been going back and forth, like maybe this, maybe this. I have overanalyzed everything. Love so, it. So, 
we'll see if this pays off for Muhammad. I think you probably like the wit and the humor to it. It, is, it has, yeah, a little bit of an undertone that I think you would enjoy. So I'm going to go with probably around like a seven and a half. And then for Ryan, you were the one I was really flipping all over on. Uh, I think you're probably going to be enjoying it about the same, actually. I think you're going to be around that seven and a half, eight range. It just seems like the humor kind of vibes. We all like to mm. flip over Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. Like, no, he's probably a three. No, maybe he's a five. Maybe he's an eight. And meanwhile, my cast is just like, <laughs> I just pictured like a pancake. Like you just imagine me like a pancake. You're like, all right, flip them over. <laughs> yeah. All right, this side's a little done. There we go. So <laughs> oh, and those, I burned it. Yeah, I those are our burger. predictions. Yeah, I'm yum. I like those. Uh-huh. Everybody at home, it's time for you to make your predictions. You didn't know you had to work to watch this show, did you? But you do. <laughs> make your predictions in the live chat. Or in the comments below, do you think I liked this show? Do you think Dr. Noor liked this show? What about Katie? What are your thoughts on her and her opinion of this show? Type away, make your predictions. There's no rush. Dr. Noor is going to uh, buy us a little bit of time by telling you what this show is even a boot. Do my best. Following Helen Tudor Fisk's husband running away and and her being fired for being aggressive with a client, she gets a job at a small Melbourne firm specializing in wills. She has some awkward interactions with her Airbnb owner and with a local coffee shop guy, but finally settles into her first day at work. She's immediately assigned a client, a client who wants to force her brother to get a vasectomy in order to get his inheritance. Helen argues that's not possible, but the client insists and also notes that the brother is resistant because he's a, quote, penis painter, meaning he paints with it, not paints them. Eventually, Helen finds a way to connect with her client and convinces her to split the inheritance with no surgical requirements. And she gets a portrait painted by his penis as a reward. Who wouldn't the want heck that? Of a recap. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that kind of reward, right? <laughs> so <Somebody> would. <laughs> where do we go now? All this talk of peni, what, what's next, Muhammad? I don't love that connection, but okay. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the show, which I like to call Expect Kitchen, where spend a little bit of time on what you expected before you watch the show, and a lot more time on what you actually kitchen, what you actually got when you watch the show. I'm not punching Katie, I swear. I would never do that. I'm learning how to dodge. Oh, Every good. time I'm on, I'm like, I've got to time it up. <laughs> or as Ryan likes to say, we like to compare and contrast what we expected with what we actually got when we watched the mm -hmm. show, and not give me away what we thought in the first part. Right. This is Muhammad's favorite part of the show. And it's my second. It's still pretty solid. Yeah. Um, all right, Muhammad, before viewing this first episode of Fisk, Fisk. what did you expect, if anything? I knew very, very little about it. All I knew was that it was Australian, it was a comedy, and it had to do with some sort of some sort of attorney. But that was literally the extent of it. I'd never heard anything else about it beyond those three facts <laughs> in fact i actually got thrown off when i put it on and said abc i was like abc oh australian a ABC. different a there <laughs> mm -hmm. it's different a eh? so uh <laughs> meteorologist katie nicolau what did you expect before watching this first episode of fisk cleverly entitled episode one well, you know, I didn't expect a lot because I don't get on Netflix all that much. I've been waiting for uh, Prodigy. Yeah, and now it's like I'm on a little bit more. But it's still, it's, I saw the, the little thumbnail that pops up and I was like, cool, beige, brown hues. <laughs> I can't, I, that's, that's about all I expected from it. I didn't even read the recap or anything. It's, just, it's probably gonna be one of those Netflix shows. It's it's a Netflix original, right? So it's uh, they have a pretty good track record. I knew it would probably be hopefully better than average. Actually, wait, one other thing I forgot to. I knew it was not about Wilson Fisk, who was Kingpin in the Marvel universe. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's excellent knowledge. That's actually a conversation Doctor Nor and I had. When uh, he mentioned Fisk, my first thought, he thought of that fellow. I thought of Carlton Fisk. Everybody knows 
the uh, baseball player who was born in 1947 and played for several, several years. I think he played well into his 40s all the way until like, you know, maybe the early 90s, but certainly the 70s and 80s. So that is really fun. We can talk a lot more about that a little later, but or before not. we do that <laughs> or not, uh, but of course we can also talk about this show Fisk. So I didn't know anything about it. Hadn't heard it. It had been recommended a few times by a few different people. So shout out to them. That's really cool that you did that. Um, Was Anne Marie one of them? I, I feel like Anne Marie would have been one of them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember, but it's, very possible because I feel like she also posted something about it. I'm not sure. Mm. Said mm. she may have been one. Yeah. So As I'm anyway. watching the show, I was like, oh, Anne Marie. Interesting. I don't Interesting. know why. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I think I know why. We could talk about that. I think I think I got it a, a reason. Okay. But I didn't know anything. I didn't expect anything. I didn't know it was Australian or I would have refused to watch it. I purposely they, didn't mention that when we were what? talking about it. <laughs> Those Australians know what they did. <laughs> they know hey, why I'm, I'm mad Australian. at them. Hey. You're Australian? Yeah, I was born in Australia. I was born in Sydney. Whoa, what? good day, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Hey. Sorry, so cool. Muhammad. I'm only it's I'm okay. only kind of mad. Anyway, no, okay. so oh. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know anything. I knew it was a half hour. Um, that's it. Dr. Nor, that's what we expected. Everybody, pencils down, by the way. I hope you've got your predictions in because you're about to find out what we actually got, starting with Dr. Nor and his clipboard. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was quite fun. Uh, I thought it was very quirky humor. <laughs> it was actually much more quirky than I would have guessed, given the people who I'd heard who were advocating it. I was like, oh, this is unexpected. Uh, I found it easy to follow. I found the the characters, you know, decent. You know, some some more interesting than others. Uh, I thought the the pace was was good. Like uh, there wasn't really a point where I got bored. It was also pretty short, so there wasn't a whole lot of time to get bored in there either. Uh, it was a it was a simple plot overall, which I mean, that's not necessarily a positive, not necessarily a negative. It's just it's just an observation that the you know somebody's first day of work and it's a very odd situation. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I came away, I mean, I, we go into specific things I thought were funny or things like that, but I mean, overall, I, I found it amusing. And, and to, one aspect, I think, that which was, which made it easier for me to follow, so there weren't a whole lot of characters. Like, it was it was pretty straightforward in terms of like, oh, okay, this is the main person, this is her boss, this is the partner of the boss or, or spouse of the boss. You know, it, it, was, it was okay. So, thumbs up. <laughs> I thought it was the sister of the boss. Or was it sister? Oh, sister. okay. Yes. I wasn't sure though. Somehow I thought related. they had the same last name, but I didn't catch the sister part. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie, what about you? What did you actually get upon viewing this Australian nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because when they mentioned Melbourne, I have family in Melbourne. For some oh. reason, the Macedonians were just spread to the wind, and a lot of them went to Ohio, and a lot of them went to Australia. So I was like. Oh, cool. And the fact that it's Australian, like, I love Bluey, the kids show. So I was like, that's another Australian show. And so immediately mm -hmm. when I saw that first card where it was like ABC, Australian broadcast, I was like, okay, my hopes for this just went up a little bit artificially just because. <laughs> um, and I just, yeah, I got a show that had really good humor. Uh, the pacing, so good. Sometimes when you get like, especially in legal dramas, it just goes on and on and on. And so a little worried there, but then it was like, yeah, it's a 20 something minute show. Yeah, this should be good. And it actually reminded me a lot of Staged. Um, if either of you have seen it, it was David Tennant and Michael Sheen. They did it during lockdown. Watch the first Staged. Gosh, watch the first stage. Uh, that's really? a threat and a promise. But oh yeah. <laughs> but the pacing and the style of it, it was so similar. And it's a very unique style. I was like, let's go. Uh, so I got a show that I was just like, this is actually wow. Ooh, we like wow around wow here. Wow is good. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Wow. You know, so I'm one of those wows. Uh, as soon as 
the opening credits kick in. It says like Australia stuff. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I purposely I, didn't mention that I part. have to watch an Australian <laughs> show. Why would I didn't even know they made shows, to be honest. I mean, at least not scripted. I know that they do like, you know, unscripted things, you know, like reality shows. But I was like, oh, yes. Have, and then I immediately started thinking, have I ever even seen a scripted Australian show or movie? And I don't think so. So I was really getting nauseous and <laughs> I felt like I. I just, I, I'm gassy. So, <laughs> uh, within a minute, I was like, oh, that's funny. And that's yeah. funny. And it, and I was like, oh, that's smart humor. That's clever. And then about six minutes and 54 seconds in, I paused it and I was like, how did they cram this much stuff and this much funny into less than seven minutes? Right. Mm -hmm. They put in a lot of information and a lot of good humor in just seven minutes. I was like, how am I going to get through all this? <laughs> because I had to pause it constantly to keep catching more jokes. I didn't want to miss the next joke. I want, you know, I wanted to give it a proper evaluation. And they were just machine gunning me with <laughs> jokes and and not just like jokes that fell flat, but good, quirky, intelligent mm -hmm. kind of thinker jokes. Sometimes I would want to play it back just to rewatch it because of how well it was written and delivered. So what I ended up getting was a very, very good show, surprisingly. Good. And I immediately thought the main lady, obviously, in the first 30 seconds, I was like, oh, she must be the writer. She must be the creator. Yeah. And the reason I thought that was because the first thing is this horribly self-deprecating humor where she's like, you can't fix this <laughs> and I'm a big dummy and, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, there's no way there's a bunch of bro dudes sitting around in a room going like, <laughs> going, all right, so we're going to write this thing and we're going to make fun of her ugly face and we're going to call her a big fat dummy and then we're going to make a facial hair <laughs> joke on her and she's going to be like, she's going to know that she's dumb and ugly and stupid and dumb. And all this, all right, ladies, line up. Who wants to be cast for this? Here we go. Come on, <laughs> step right up. So I knew as soon as you see that, I immediately was like, okay, she, and I'm sure I don't even have to look. I'm sure she's at, she's either the writer or one of the writers, one of the creators, very clearly. And she mm -hmm. clearly wrote it with herself in mind. Uh, and I think that she hit it out of the park. So good for her and whomever is working with her. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Yeah, right. I had a very similar reaction to what you said, too. That actually was writing down all the funny lines, but I realized I was writing down like the entire script of the show. Yeah, after, I was like, oh, yeah. The I first seven minutes. Writing. I, like, I spent good. 45 <laughs> minutes on the first seven minutes. I'm like, okay, the, you guys, <laughs> you've got to stop putting so many jokes in because this is kind of my job. I can't just like glaze over them. I got to write all this good stuff down. Yeah. So you guys got to... Mm -hmm. spread it out more you're killing me i was like in order to actually like thoroughly comprehend this i had to watch it like multiple times so i made sure i didn't miss any scraps like it was just like boom 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 yep wow so uh, that was actually in a weird way my only qualm was that there were <laughs> too, too <good>. many <laughs> jokes and not enough it wasn't spread out enough because then i'm like if i'm watching the show without pausing I'm missing stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss stuff. Sure if you I, weren't taking notes, if you were just watching it without taking notes, would you still have been missing stuff? A little bit. I wouldn't be fully appreciating it because some of these things you have to, like, I like to, to fully appreciate it. I want to pause it and think about not just the joke that they said, but how it was delivered and why mm -hmm. that works and why it's smart humor and all this. Now, if I'm thinking that as the show's going, then I'm not giving the proper attention to the next joke that's flying by. Or the next show, you know, kind of a minor grievance, but it was, I was like, you guys, in order for me to fully appreciate each line here, <laughs> you're going to have to give me <laughs> some reaction shots to give me a chance to 
to fully react. But you're like a kid know. in a wave pool. It's just one after the other after yeah. the other. And I loved all the waves, but give me a second oh, yeah. to catch. I, I sound like such I an make old. Make sure I don't drown. I sound like such an old. There were too many jokes in there. Yeah, I enjoyed them, but th- there shouldn't be that many jokes every minute. That's too many. <laughs> Calm down. This isn't a racetrack. It's not an amusement park. <laughs> Oh my god, mom! And you got your notes. What do you got for us? Oh, I have so many. I mean, I, I feel like I'd be reading the entire script of the show. There, like the, the, I mean, lots of the, lots of things about the, um, lots of things about the the way she was dressed, the, the furniture chameleon comment, and that hilarious. guy who like almost sat on her. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> that was amazing. That's that's uh, when I started to fully turn around and realize, okay, this is actually yeah. really funny. Yeah, I like your suit. It reminds me of cheese. <laughs> the comment about like she's is she afraid of being hit by a car. <laughs> yes, high vis suit. <laughs> there was just like like I said, I feel like I'm just reading the entire script of the show if I went through the whole thing. From the, uh, I'm just jumping down to some of the funny. Yeah, especially when we got to the penis paint draw, there was all sorts of stuff like when oh she my was gosh, cut, yes. when she was cutting the 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 bread thing or whatever it was, and, and somebody said, "This is where we want." It's like that's clearly a circumcision gone horribly wrong and not a vasectomy. <laughs> I had to pause. I was laughing so hard when that came up. <laughs> Um, there was just so much there were so many good lines there like the, the script was like very very good and i actually i mean i like the pace i mean to some extent to your point right now I, I feel like if you miss a couple of them there's enough there that like eh, whatever you can catch them on the rewatch <laughs> so mm. that, that didn't bother me so much but i, I, I hear what you're give, saying that oh, yeah. i just want to give them justice you know the you. justice they you. deserve because somebody was in the writer's room being like oh and then say this and I'm going to skip that great little nugget because I'm too busy yeah. laughing at what Fran said or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I thoroughly. Uh, I like the characters too. Like I said, the the um, the webmaster guy, George. <laughs> that, was, that was a very odd. I mean, it was just odd enough and quirky enough that I was like, "This is funny." <laughs> so <laughs> that, I'll stop with that. Let like Katie have a chance to give something. No, because too. you're absolutely right. It was like a good balance, and I think Ryan mentioned it earlier. They didn't introduce too many characters, and that's a big pet peeve of mine Mm because i i'm already bad with names thank heavens we have name cards on zoom yeah (laughs) yes i I know i always use it too that was muhammad that said that but i totally agree because too many characters it takes you out of it because you can't just it's too much but sorry you were saying oh yeah well and there were also unique and distinct and like they introduced periphery characters like the barista and stuff Mm -hmm. but didn't give them a name that didn't make me feel guilty for not remembering it 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 was so much of an easy watch and i appreciate easy watches that have intelligence with them too it's very reminiscent of abbott elementary um even right down to the writer being the the lead actor in it is is a they understand the character so well that when they're introduced, they immediately take it and start running, which might not have happened if it wasn't that writer actor combo. Mm-hmm. But that's a great thing to talk about, actually. Favorite character. This is going to be tough. Ooh. This is tough for this one. <laughs> Dr. Nor, do you have a favorite character amongst the plethora? I mean, Helen was fantastic, but I mean, I, I I usually don't like picking the main character because that's usually too easy. So I'll go with George, the webmaster guy. <laughs> I, I thought, <laughs> it was just so weird. I was like, what? <laughs> I did also like the the Seven Eleven guy. I mean, it wasn't the Seven Eleven, but the equivalent, the Seven Eleven guy who came yeah. and told them like, you can't be watching porn here, but if you want to pretend it's a, it's like a little coffee shop, I guess it's okay or something. Yeah, like that. that was yeah. very funny. <laughs> yeah, you just pull the oh handle, gosh, bro. Yeah. Just. And yeah. get your own coffee. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to make it seem like a full service place. They're like, oh, yeah. Garcon, can we have it? He's like, just oh, yeah. dude, pull the thing. <laughs> what about you, Katie? Do you have uh, a favorite character? Yes, I, I'm going with Fisk. I, I just love her energy and the <laughs> chaos and sarcasm. It's something I wish I had more of in my presence in life because oh, you're awesome so funny you <laughs> oh shucks i also love the grandma too <laughs> and she's renting the house from i just think oh, she's yeah. adorable and it's just so oh my gosh yes funny mm-hmm. fisk of the north star i just thought of that one that one uh it's mm-hmm. a good one so my favorite character i think was maybe the grandma 
because oh, yes. she gave me like a legitimate outward, very audible <laughs> laugh, like a very audible laugh when she when she said, tell her shoes belong outside. <laughs> I don't know why that was, because that's just such a good character. And this poor lady is so helpless against them all. Like she's just like, uh, I don't, you know, basically what we've got here, but all the characters were very good. The boss, the mm. boss remind yeah. me a little bit of the office, a little bit of this reminded yeah, me of the office. Totally. He's kind of like, the oh, dumb yeah. and clueless, but he doesn't know he's dumb and clueless. He thinks everything, everything's so mm -hmm. obvious. Just it's this, it's that, whatever, you know. It goes Every in the same category as good. Office and Parks and Rec. Like yeah. both of those are very similar to this. WTF, yeah. Parks and Rec, everybody. I like your analogy with uh, Abbott Elementary. It is a lot like Abbott Elementary in some respects. Mm -hmm. The same sort of quirkiness. Haven't seen oh, yeah. it. And like, huh? WTF. Oh. WTF Abbott? Yes, Elementary. WTF. My mom's a, my mom's a retired teacher. <laughs> and so it's even more fun to watch the show with her. Because uh, she's like, yeah. I had this one student that reminds me exactly of this and this. And I'm just sitting here like, Mom, half your students are in prison. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I thought, for some reason, I thought Abbott Elementary was about like a private eye. And I just realized it's because I, it must have been because elementary <laughs> is... Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, anyway, but I didn't even thing. I didn't even yeah. think that it elementary means it's a little school. Oh, I gave it away. Now you <laughs> yeah. really have to watch the first. Yeah. So what I realized about midway through this, what this show is really a boot is that. Sorry, how do how do Australians say about a, 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 a I don't know. They say <laughs> things funny. Anyway, the point is <laughs> what this is is basically she is sane in a crazy world but they all think she is crazy for being sane at least this is her perspective in her mind she's the whole world has gone mad and they all look at her like she's the crazy person you know it's almost like she's walking in a computer simulation but she's in the wrong program because they're all like oh why are you acting this way it's obviously this so she is the fish out of water in every single situation and she's a little weird but clearly this the situation around her and the people around her are much weirder weirder so i was thinking this show is like therapy for people that think the world has gone mad and that people are stupid like everybody that's driving around in traffic thinking like the world's gone mad. The things they love this show because they're like, "Yes, you're speaking my language. Yes, everybody's weird. Everybody's crazy. I'm not. This show gets it. I feel like that's what this. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's like therapy for them. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's. Uh, you guys want to point out a few more ha ha's? Muhammad did. Katie, did you have a few more ha ha moments? Oh gosh, there's. <laughs> Towards the end, when she's just sitting in it is a po almost like a post mid credit scene sort of thing, when she's sitting there and getting her painting done, the, the oh sister gosh. of the firm. <laughs> just he's there, just gyrating behind a just a canvas. I'm like laughing because of what's happening on the screen, but also just like, how did they tell this? How did the director go about telling the actor? I'm gonna need you to just pop a sock on and just start slamming into this canvas. There wasn't a sock. I I, yes. I thought I may have gotten a glimpse of a couple things. Oh, at one point. oh gosh! And it was just... it was very fleshy colored. Oh, oh god! Oh, I just that made me laugh so much. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, that that and the just yeah them pulling off the coffee crate or the the, the giant crates in the back of their coffee shop <laughs> yes, and just that. sitting down, just plumbing down. They're like. It's just delicious. <laughs> like the everything, the co the the acting comedy, just the facial expressions, the the verbal comedy. Uh, there's too much to like, list. <laughs> I'll list a few. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the grandma was the the actress great. The the setup, the writing around it, that it was very charming and and very funny. You know, and the way the the daughter or the the granddaughter Juliana was kind of like attitude-y, you know. Yeah. 
and, and all that, that it all works. It, the, the thing is, is they created characters that all work with one another, where they're like, this character needs to be like this for it to fit and for it to work. And they all did. All the actors were great. George was hilarious. Uh, and they all got their introduction super quickly. In yeah. in 10 seconds, you get who this character is. Okay, you get it right away. Their first line, their first movement, right away you understand what the character's like. Uh, yeah, is she afraid of getting hit by a car? That was very funny. You know what it is? I realized early on in this, I like mean humor. And this humor, <laughs> all this humor was mean. It was mean to people. It was mean to her. It was mean to other people. It, it was, it's just funny because it's so freaking mean. It's delicious well, and without being cruel i like that aspect of it. yes oh i love cruelty too <laughs> oh my mm. god it's like the icing on the <laughs> cake <laughs> no but um oh when the lady says ruth i think her name was my mother died recently and she's like waiting for the pot she's like uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm sorry for your loss and she's like thank you <laughs> like we get who she is too uh the greasy snacks that come free with the coffee just is an added bonus. So you really know how shitty that coffee <laughs> is. You know, it, it's all these small touches. There were, I got ha ha's littered throughout my notes. Oh, uh, the client calls the coffee delicious. The clerk says you can't watch porn in here. We got that. Oh, very grassroots. Get it yourself. Uh, a lot of things like that. Oh, I'll fix the, when George says, I'll fix Helen's face. That was very funny. I'll fix her face. You're fine. He was the taking the pictures. Oh, that was a bet. That was hilarious. Oh my gosh. That's Sorry, that picture was crazy. She's like, Oh, I'm sure I look fine. Oh, take it again. Because my mom just yeah, yeah. said to me all the time. Yeah. She's like, I'm sure it's fine. But then she sees it. Uh, when the barista says, you're, you, We have to ask you to leave because you're shouting. And she's like, You're talking aggressively. So, you know, your vibe is like really loud so, so it's the vibe that and i've said that before where i'm like you're yelling at me but the person's not actually yelling it just feels <laughs> like you're being yelled at i'm very fragile too um anyway and one how long point. is the ban is another one <laughs> oh, yeah. how long is the what <laughs> the ban <laughs> oh yes oh and that kept coming okay. up yeah. the running gag i feel like they're gonna end up we haven't seen the last of that. That's a very clear, great setup. This is Clearly. has got such a great engine. All these characters and every the situation. It's just you can make ten seasons of this. Where I actually had to pause it to laugh. Where I paused it because I'm like, my laughing is going to ruin this thing. <laughs> was towards the end when <laughs> when she's showing Ray the boss the the penis painting. And he's and she's like, look at he's like, oh, and this is this is the penis painter. And she goes, yeah. And he goes, so that's all done with jizz. <laughs> yeah, oh my god! Yeah, that was like, hilarious. Like, what? It's no, so funny because you're like, he's like, what? And it's like, is that what you thought this whole time that there's just this guy with different colored jizz? Like, what is that even? How does that work? What is that anyway? That was just so good. Uh, and then the lady says, I prefer to sit for it. And then the, anyway, <laughs> lots of stuff. Yeah. Lots of stuff there. Um, did you guys have any nitpicks? She didn't really. Oh, they didn't show <laughs> the dog. She mentioned she had a dog and I didn't see a dog. True. Oh, I missed that. Only nitpick. You got If you're promising it, I need to see it. <laughs> True. Wow, that's it. There's going to be yeah, some I'm high marks, nitpicks. maybe. Did you have any? Just like I said that I'm an old and I thought that it moved too quickly. If that's really an if that's really a thing, I'm like I. I mean, if it is to you, it is. <laughs> it might have just been their introduction, but you know, look, if that's their style, that's their style. It's for people whose brains move very quickly, which is great. I loved how smart it was, you know. But there were a couple of times where I was like, yeah, give us a breather, give us a show, do a do a you know a, a quick shot of a, a reaction shot of somebody you know or or, or of the dog fifi or whatever yeah. but that's if a very minor if you've, seen, if you've seen kim's convenience they always had these little transitional shots there which yes. had like little quick scenes of stuff so they could do something like that to give a breather mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they gave one. I think it was of the guy eating or cutting or the, the sausage biscuit. I feel like I saw one only. Anyway, you guys, we have got to move on and talk about something very important, which is yes. meteorologist Katie. Katie, everybody at home, she is a meteorologist. She's an Emmy Award winning meteorologist. She's also, uh, you know, a podcaster. She has podcasts. She makes viral videos. It's too much to keep up with. But yes, can you, can you please tell us what's new just so that we could try to keep up with you? Totally. Oh, man, I'm telling you, we're running ourselves ragged over here trying to get through the last of Avatar, the last stairbender. Uh, my friend Brandy and I, we know each other since college. We've been going through it since honestly i think it's been like two years now we've been going through the series which it's a kid's show it only has three seasons it's taken us this long like but netflix is actually coming out with a live action remake or adaptation i guess and we're trying to get done before that comes out so we're doing our order of the blue lotus stream pretty much every monday night now uh just trying to catch up and we're going through all the interesting episodes of season three and that's been fun and uh Currently figuring out a couple more. Welcome to our cults. Uh, you know, gotta gotta pace how many cults you're in. So we're we're taking that slow, but uh, it's looking like Beavis and Butthead might be popping up for a welcome to our cult. We'll see. Yeah, I know. You want to be a part of our cult? <laughs> I'm already part of that cult. <laughs> oh, brilliant! You can be a cult leader. So, uh, tell us a bit more about that. Welcome to our cult. What's that? Yes. Yes. So it's a fun show I came up with. I think I was driving and I'm just like, oh, let's do this. Uh, for uh, basically so many random fandoms, my YouTube channel, I have a lot of shows and they're very cultish when you get into the fans. And if you actually look at it, it, it kind of is. But there's so many amazing fandoms that I wish my friends were a part of. So I started with Good Omens. Uh, my friend Jillian and I, getting from college, introduced Charlene Schmidt and my friend Brandy to Good Omens. And uh, yeah, we got one of them. You'll have to go and watch and see which one. But uh, yes, Ooh. we welcome someone into our cult. And uh, it's just a fun way to go and visit your favorite shows with people who haven't seen it and people who have. And it's a really great time. So with your Sounds avatar, like what are, time. With your avatar, mm -hmm. what are you are you just describing what's happening? Like, what's what's the podcast? Yeah. I know I've seen it, but I'm just saying for everybody else. Oh, yeah, totally. So Order of the Blue Lotus, we kind of go through and like dissect the episode and talk about little bits and pieces. And then we go into fan theories and yeah. theories that are tying into the lore. It's so much fun. Oh, my gosh. And then we go through fan fan art uh, at the end, too, which can get spicy uh, as the Internet search engines have proven mm -hmm. to me. But otherwise, it's, we, we filter it down for viewers. Uh, but it's great because you get to see all different aspects of one episode of the show and we just take a step by step and it all comes together beautifully. How far into season three are you right now? Oh gosh, we're coming up past the day of Black Sun. Okay. So I'm I'm just counting down until we get to Boiling Rock because I love that. <laughs> Black Suns and Boiling Rocks. This is nuts. Oh, season three yes. is amazing for Avatar. That's the best season. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So many hairstyles. I'm just yeah. now appreciating oh, yeah. that as an adult. As a kid, I was just like, why does he look emo? It's like, nah, nah, nah. There's a reason behind this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Katie, can you tell everybody where they can find all of your goodies online? Absolutely. You can find me as at weather underscore Katie on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, threads, blah, everywhere, TikTok, all those places. If you want to find me on YouTube, just go to so many random fandoms, pop up there, or you can find me occasionally on Watch the First and Star Trek Ooh. and Chill because got to end my week right. Love it. Yes. Wow, so many things. You've got so many random fandoms, Katie. That's amazing. Who <laughs> would have thought? <laughs> yeah. All right, Muhammad is ready. We are ready. It is time for the final two questions bottom of the line. show. And those are called the terrible two. The bottom line. I still like the... Oh, you yeah. can do both. You can both. <laughs> John Travolta. All right. All right. <laughs> So question number one, this is a fun one. Question number one mm. is, on a scale of one to 10, Dr. Muhammad Noor, what would you give this first episode of Fisk and why? So I initially had written down an eight, which is exactly what you had predicted, Ryan. I'll grant you that one. Mm. But actually, as we discussed it more, I think I'm actually going to go up a little bit. I'm going to go to an 8.5. 
Because it's true. I mean, I didn't actually have any criticisms at all, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I was a little conservative with the eight. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. What about you, Katie? Thank you. What about you, Katie? Did Ooh. you did you waver? What would you give it, and why? I think I'm going to give it the highest score I've given any watch the first, which is a nine. Wow. Uh, I really really like this and i can't wait to share it with my family now uh awesome. because i just think it's it's very funny it's so yeah there's not much to nitpick on it um that yeah i cannot justify going lower for myself mm -hmm. interesting well i'm gonna i'm gonna have to lower our average um oh. but not today it's you know when it ended i i i just put in my notes i just said geez that was really good like it's gonna be hard I, I really can't think of anything that's bad about it you know like my one little nitpick is just my own little personal and it's not even really that big of a deal or even right um i so so if there are no flaws basically and it's very good and you could tell what the vision was for the show because they successfully achieved it right they i believe that they executed their vision perfectly at least to my eyes it seems like they did so i'm giving it a 9.7 wow when i was going to give it last night i was going to give it a 9.5 and i was thinking why am I giving it a 9.5 if there's nothing really wrong with it? I'm just being a jerk. So I was like, all right, I'll bump it up to a 9.7. Um, and really, wow. you could make a case that it's a 10 because you could make that case. Just because if there's nothing wrong with it, then what's wrong with it? So anyway. I'm really glad I flipped you back to the high side then with my guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was every character was great. The actors were great. The, the comedic lines were great. The comedic delivery was fantastic. It's like, it's like they get it. They get comedy. They understand why things are funny, and they know how to duplicate funny things. They know how to make something funny. They, whoever's doing this, they get it. And that's writing, that's directing, that's acting. It's all of it. They get it. It's fucking funny smart but that's how i feel about that question number two is the crazy one for the purposes of this podcast we all had to watch this first episode of the australian show <laughs> called fisk now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet dr muhammad nor would you watch the second episode of carlton fisk tuna <laughs> tuna fish I would not watch Carlton Fisk. I may watch Wilson Fisk, but I probably will watch this Fisk. So I would say yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Only a probably though. Vincent, what's it? Vincent D'Onofrio. Is that his name? The guy who played uh, Wilson Fisk. Oh, D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio. That yeah. yeah. He did. He did it in Daredevil. Oh, he was fantastic. So I would totally watch that Fisk series too. <laughs> oh, I saw him on a panel. He's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wandered into a Daredevil panel at Star, oh. or, uh, Galaxy Con Columbus. And nice. Yeah, he's really funny. That's awesome. Interesting. Maybe there's, hey, there's demand for it. They better supply. <laughs> uh, Katie, put on your tough person construction hat. Would you watch this? <laughs> hey, Jordy. <laughs> I turned into Jordy for so yeah. second there. <laughs> Would you watch the second of your own volition? Yes, because I already have. Oh. I want to see if the dog showed up. <laughs> is the second as good sure as the first? <laughs> I'll tell you the first five seconds of the first is as, or second is as good as the first. Okay. It's, yeah, definitely. Did the dog show up? Yes, yes. It's, it's a girl dog. We know yeah. that. We know it's a girl dog. <laughs> is because it? Because she said she at some point. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> or she goes, just, I think she yeah, said. just watch the first seconds of it interesting all right yeah i think so yeah it's great all right well everybody it's actually a yes for me um mm -hmm. i'm not like thrilled or over the moon to watch you know basically sitcoms because there's not really much but uh 
I feel like there's enough with these characters to where there is, uh, there is kind of, it's not, it's, it's not so much serialized, but the characters are serialized to where you know that there's going to be a character arc. Oh, you yeah. know that she's going to, the, the main character is going to make friends. She may make friends with the owner of that coffee shop, but you know it's going to be a running gag. You know yeah. that either they're just going to be forever enemies and butting heads and she's going to be trying to, and it's going to get harder and harder when people are like, she's going to try to say to her client, do you want me to get you some coffee? And they're going to say, oh yeah, but get the one downstairs. That's my favorite. And she's going to, ah, you know, and that's a whole episode there where how do I get trick somebody into getting coffee for this person? You you can see how this can just go on forever and the character arcs can grow and they can change in a lot of ways, or they can just stay super rigid, which is also funny. Either way, it's a yes for me. They've earned it. It's very good. It's a very good show. Congratulations to them. Well done. They've earned it. They nailed it, I think. That's awesome. Yeah. That's it for us, right? What do you guys say? I think that's it. Oh, yeah. We could talk about this podcast. <laughs> yep. Everybody, please make sure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you're listening in, give us a five-star rating, please, and a nice review. We'd really appreciate that. If you want to know every time we release a video, hit the bell icon for notifications, and then you'll be notified. It should be fun. We love having you here. Make sure to make a suggestion in the comments below. Tell us what would you like us to review, WTF and the show and where we can stream it, and we will review it. Right, Muhammad? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We'll Make see. sure to do it about the new Avatar series when it comes out, the WTF new Avatar series on Netflix Ooh. when that comes out. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I don't yeah. like this idea. <laughs> so if, you guys, if you guys want to torture me, everybody, go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'm trying to say is this podcast is always fun AF with Muhammad and Katie. Okay. This podcast will make my wife very happy since she liked the series and was among the people who suggested it. <laughs> Ooh. See, this podcast was fun. It was smart. It was with you guys. And now I'm going to go show it to my family. So, uh, yes. <laughs> the podcast uh, or the show? <laughs> both. Ah, nice. <laughs> this is life is good, everybody. Boy, life oh boy. Good. Life especially is when we, good. Especially when we get to hang out with Ryan and Katie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Muhammad. Especially when we have a bona fide Australian with us on this show. Yes. <laughs> Man, Royal Hospital has... for Women in Paddington. That's where I was born. Really? We have at Paddington like the bear? Like the bear, yeah. Oh. No wonder you're so nice. You were born into it. <laughs> mm. God, life is so good. Anyway, <laughs> isn't it? Please remember, everybody, what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of things. All right. Freeze frame like George. Which one was George again? Oh, the webmaster. <laughs>